Peter chapter 3 and chapter 5. This year we read the book, The Year We Disappeared, and the genre is a memoir. A memoir is a collection of memories that an individual writes about or events, both public or private, that took place in the author's life. The lesson will focus on the chapter that Celine wrote. So today I will talk to you briefly and read summaries from a book. I want you to think about the events that have changed your life. Some of you have had happy events, while others may have had tragic events that have changed your life. I think the Curie kept us on in 1979, while Celine Busby was nine years old, her father, police officer of Massachusetts, was shot in the head. The lower half of his jaw was removed, his tongue was torn in half, his teeth and gums blown away. The details of the intricate surgery needed to reconstruct the lower half of his jaw and his painful, pain-filled rehabilitation and described in a surgical detail in the book. John Busby believed he was shot because he was about to testify against a local gangster and his family. When he leaves the hospital, the situation in a small town escalates and the Busby family is forced to relocate to a new state under the same name. Okay, the lecture card is Celine was nine years old and was obsessed with Oz-Eye clothing, the Muppets, and a box turtle she kept in a shoebox. Then everything changed one night. On page 31, I began to read. I woke up in my dark room hearing my mom crying and screaming. At first, I thought she was just watching TV. It continues to page 32. I knew something was wrong, but I hoped that the voices were just some friends of Kelly's. She had been out with, to the movies that night. Did her dad come home with her? But why was mom crying? I opened the door just a crack and saw Rick Smith, a big red-headed guy who was one of dad's best friends on the force, standing in our living room. He was in his uniform and I could hear the static sounds from the black and white walkie-talkie on the set. The same kind that Dad carried, with a tiny voice of a dispatcher cutting through and saying something in a mysterious code of numbers and words I did not understand. Rick was holding Mom's arm around her side by her side, talking to her quietly, and she was crying, saying no, 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 over and over. I stepped into the room. Mom, I just was about. I, Mom, I just I asked, just as she shook her body free from Rick's hold, don't. She yelled at him as he tried to hold her again, and she. Pace the floor a few times, walking into the kitchen. He stayed close by her, saying, It's okay, Polly. He's alive. He's alive. Okay, now stop and jot. If you were nine years old and this event happened in your life, what would you, what would be the first thoughts about the situation? One more time. Stop and jot. If you were nine years old and this event happened in your life, what would be your first thoughts about the situation? Here is after they have left uh, their home to go to their aunt and uncle's house, and her mom is visiting from the hospital, and these are some emotions that she's feeling. I went up to the bathroom crying so hard I couldn't catch my breath. When I tried to breathe in the air in my throat, I hated Lauren for being right. Tubes and bandages and machines. My dad was going to die. And even my mom was lying about it. I hated everyone, everyone, everyone. I went into the bathroom and slammed the door hard. Then I opened it all the way and slammed it again 
Carter. I sat on the floor and cried, waiting for my aunt and uncle to come, or my mom to yell for me for slamming the door, but no one did. After a few minutes, I looked into the mirror over the sink at my blotchy face and red eyes. I stared at my face for a long time. I was still freckled from the summer sun, and my skin was brown, my hair was bleached blonde. I looked just like the girl I had been last week, but I felt so different. I didn't understand why my anger, why the anger I felt didn't show on my face. I wanted to scratch myself and put a mark somewhere. I ran my fingernails down one cheek, but my nails were so short to leave a mark. After staring at myself for a few minutes, I splashed some water on my face and went back downstairs. Okay, so, uh, turn and talk to your neighbor and tell me what the mood is after listening to that. What is the reader's mood? Remember we talked about tone. Tone is the author's words. Mood is how the reader feels. How do you feel after hearing that uh, She didn't know what was happening. She was scared. Trey, what did your group talk about? We said that um, how that, like, um, what the mood of what, what, what that is um, was sad. Sad. Very good. The mood is sad. Because um, just all the emotions that she was What did y'all say the mood was? course of the year, the family realizes that life cannot, can't continue this way and they have to disappear, moving to a new state where no one knows their story and they pray that no one ever does find them. Anybody have a different mood that they had after they read the, uh, after I read the excerpt from the, the book the second time? Everybody agrees that it was sad, worried, confused. Anybody have a different response? Okay, each of you has a ticket that says red, green, blue, or orange. If you will, quietly move to the station, purple, purple uh, move to your station. Thank <laughs> you. 